Good evening and welcome to uh, our second episode of Footprints. My name is Mr. Davis. I'm your host and I'm an educator here at BHS. And uh, before we get going really quick, uh, I want to shout out Mr. Thomas. I had mentioned Mr. Thomas in our first episode. And for those of you who don't know, Mr. Thomas is the principal here at uh, Beverly High School. And I uh, just want to shout out Mr. Thomas and let him know. Appreciate him very much. Uh, with me today uh, is Mr. Pittman. He is a personal finance teacher here at Beverly High School. And also with me today is Elodie, Elodie um, let me say that right, Elodie LaPointe. Yes. Who um, also is with me. And what we're going to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, HBCUs. And we want to actually hit on the, that subject and, and talk a lot about um, what's going on in those particular schools and, and also how many there are. Uh, currently, I did a little research, there's 107 HBCUs. Mm -hmm. um, and the largest ones um, are North Carolina AT&T, um, Howard University, which there are some famous folks who went to Howard University, mm -hmm. right? Um, St. Phillips College, that's one, uh, actually that's three. Uh, Tennessee State University, where I think Oprah Winfrey went to, right? Um, Florida A&M University, excuse me, and uh, Morgan State, and so on. So we're going to get to uh, some of these schools. But uh, my first question would be um, to Mr. Pittman. Mr. Pittman, um, you actually used to take students on uh, a trip to HBCUs. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came about? Oh, certainly. Uh, thank you for having me, by the way. Um, I've been going on this particular trip for about 20 years now, with the exception of COVID. We went every year for about 20 years, and the organizer of the trip, he's been gone for 30 years plus. He graduated from Morehouse about 40 years ago, and ever since then, he's been taking students from the Boston area to the HBCUs down south. So I hooked up with him when I was working at John D. O'Brien in Boston, and he asked me, do I want to take a trip? I said, where? Where are we going? <laughs> so he said uh, he grabs a bunch of students from the Boston area, and he takes them down south. So I said, no problem. So that was uh, quite a few years ago when I was working at John D. O'Brien. And uh, ever since then, I've been going with them. And we've been going every year with the exception of two years during covid and we didn't go last year. So ever since, was it last year? No, we went last oh, year. Oh, went last year? Okay. Yeah. Yes, we did. Uh, the year before that. <laughs> year before that. Uh, so I've been going a quite, uh, quite a while, and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that we go to colleges, we also go to historical places along the way and on the way back. So it's kind of like an educational trip as well. As a matter of fact, his slogan is he turns the bus into a mobile classroom. So we look at... Uh, a lot of historical places other than in addition to the schools. Excellent. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. So uh, again, with us today is Elodie LaPointe. And Elodie actually went on this particular trip. I did. Um, so can you give us a little background about the trip and, and, you know, some likes and dislikes? Or maybe just, you know, let us know how, how it went down. I will say that initially I wasn't as well-versed and HBCUs. I think I had like a light knowledge on all things college because my parents didn't go in the States at least. So there's different schools in Haiti, but here they didn't go to college. So I'm like, if I'm going to be the first to do it, I need to make sure where I'm going is where I'm comfortable, where I feel safe. Um, and basically after being introduced to HBCUs to historically black colleges and universities and having gone to a predominantly white elementary school, middle school, high school, I'm like, mm, this kind of sounds like something I want to do, so let's see what it's about. Um, I went on the trip, and I think apart from the community building that it does, because I was very secluded, I'm very, I'm like a recluse, but going out, seeing people made me more open to being sociable, for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I went on to the trip, um, I was the only one from Beverly that went on the trip. Unfortunately, there was other people who wanted to, but then things came up, and it just happened to be me. Um, and I saw these schools, and I think I implore anyone who wants to go to college to 
go and see any school because then you know what you like and what you don't like and what's too much and what's too small. Mm -hmm. And I went, and I think the first one we went to was Fort Valley. Fort Valley. Yeah, yes, it was. I think it was Fort Valley, Georgia. and that was in Georgia. It wasn't for me, but I enjoyed the experience because I knew that it told me that it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And we went to the schools, we saw everything, and I thought, I feel like I could fit in here. Spelman caught my eye, Hampton caught my eye, Howard, of course, you know, the illustrious Howard University. No doubt, no doubt. I had to say a little bit So about what it. specifically caught your eye at Spelman? Um, I think, as many people say, it's the sisterhood, and it's, it's not very obvious unless you're paying attention for it. Mm -hmm. I saw them intermingling and conversing with each other, and it wasn't uncomfortable. I didn't feel like there was an air of tension. Um, the way they talked about their traditions, how if you're a Spelmanite, you get to walk underneath the arch when you graduate, and you know basic HBC rules, don't walk on the grass. Yes, it's like small, but that is a part of the experience, the HBC experience. So it mm -hmm. called me to the school, the sisterhood for sure. Oh, I love it. So being from um, a big family yourself, how many siblings do you have? I have three siblings. Three siblings, and I know about big families myself because I have seven children. Mm -hmm. um, Having now being the first to take that leap, mm -hmm. you feel a sense of responsibility, right? A huge sense of responsibility. I, I have my younger sisters looking up to me, figuring out where they want to go in life. It doesn't even have to be college, but if I can show them that here's a path you can take and it's a good one, it's a path that can get you somewhere else, of course I'll take it so they can either follow in the footsteps or create their own path. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So having said that, Let's think about this for a minute. A lot of folks don't know about HBCUs, yeah. right? And what we want to do is we want to try to expose you to, to what an HBCU is. Obviously, historically, black colleges and universities have been around for generations, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of folks don't know and a lot of students don't know that that's an option for you if you really want to go to school, yeah. which is something you didn't know I at didn't that know. time, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to thank Mr. Pittman for that because... Mr. Pittman being involved in the program he was in mm -hmm. um, through through Boston, that is one of the things that really exposed you to it. Yes, it is. And so being able to, to, to have different outlets and, and exposure like that is probably one of the greatest things that a, a teacher or an educator can do for a student. Mm -hmm. And so I really love the fact that, that we're here talking and discussing that. So um, what's funny is I ask my students in, in my class sometimes, do you know who Spike Lee is? And nobody really knows who Spike Lee is in my class. I know Spike Lee's a little bit older, mm -hmm. but you mean Spike Lee obviously went to Morehouse, yep. which is a historically black black college. Mm -hmm. He named his 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 uh, production company Forty Acres and a Mule because that was what was promised to the slaves they never got. Yep. So to keep that tradition kind of alive in the in the colleges and letting people know that there's options that they can go and they can see these things was really kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what kind of um, uh, what kind of places did you guys visit when you were down there? And uh, you said you went to like four different schools, right? We went to, I think we went to a went lot to, more than we four. We went quite a few. We went to Howard, Hampton. Spelman. Spelman, Morehouse, Morehouse Clark. Fort Valley. Fort Valley. Um, and I believe that was it. I think so. Yeah. Wait, maybe it was seven. But, wow. And again, not only the schools, we went to a couple of museums. Yes. We went to when we're the, in Georgia, we went to the Martin Luther Martin King, Luther King oh, Center yes. uh, mm -hmm. for a nonviolent change museum. Mm -hmm. We visited his house. We visited yes. his burial site. Yes, we did. What else did we do? Wow. Uh, I loved going to see the museum. Um, I thought it was like very full circle because in the beginning it was okay, transatlantic slave trade, what are we talking about here? And then they, they very much tied it together with a bow when they talked about modern day and how being black doesn't just mean you're African-American and these are your roots. It was, it was very <laughs> much on a spectrum. It was one of my favorite sites that we visited. What's interesting about the HBCU, some of them are public and okay. some of them are private, private. Yeah. which some folks don't know that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of did a little research on that. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I got that in because I think it's important to understand where you're going, right? And a lot of them have different programs and areas of study that they have, um, businesses, engineering, liberal arts, uh, social media, um, trades, communications, healthcare, mm -hmm. things like that. It's all the things that, that our parents told us about when we were younger, but 
we didn't really know about yeah, yeah. until we actually got to college, right? And so being able to do that kind of thing and go there and be exposed to that must have been a really wonderful experience for you, having never gone yeah. and done any of that. Yeah, right? I think it was a, a culture shock for me. I think seeing so many people that looks like me in a space, of course, you're going to have differences with people. That's just how humans are. Mm -hmm. But to be able to say, you look like me, I look like you, and there's a chance that what I went through, you went through too, and I can talk about it without having to explain every single situation was just refreshing. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things that's funny. Like, um, when I got to college, that's the first time I saw a professor of color. Um, wow. You know, me coming back, I mean, I, I, I grew up in South Weymouth, so I had, you know, all teachers that weren't of color. Mm -hmm. and, and that was from elementary school to middle school, right through high school. But when I went to Emerson, that was my first, first, oh, I was like, wow, this is interesting. This is different. Mm -hmm. I had never seen that before. And so now knowing that, obviously, that there are HBCUs out there, that made it even more like, wow, uh, an, uh, an epiphany-type moment yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. um, because I was like, okay, now there's, like, instead of, like, me being in a classroom and, and a kid can hopefully relate to me, I, you know what, I might want to do that, what Mr. Davis does want someday. But now they see you know, that there's choices for them to make yep. in terms of I can go here, I can go there, I can now have options, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, a couple things I want to mention. Um, we've, Oprah Winfrey went to, I said, Tennessee uh, State University. Spike Lee went to Morehouse College. Uh, Chadwick Bozeman, may he uh, rest in peace, Howard uh, went to, to Howard University. Uh, Lionel Richie, ladies oh, and gentlemen, Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. went to uh, Tuskegee University, yeah. which is interesting. And uh, you know what he went there for? He went there on a tennis scholarship. Imagine really? that—a tennis scholarship, Lionel Richie. That's so interesting. And it is interesting because because <laughs> look what he's look what he's doing now, right? right? Yeah. So sometimes you like you get guided to something, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now three you're over here. Yeah, three times See, a that's lady. That's one of the things HBCU is uh, well known for. They're they're well known for opening up your eyes and um, there's an expression on Tuskegee campus about lifting the veil of ignorance mm -hmm. they have a statue where uh, a veil is being lifted and every time that we visit Tuskegee they uh, they express that's the the model of the school lifting the veil of ignorance so you never know what your talents are unless you uncover mm -hmm. some hidden talents oh, without a doubt very well said mr. Pittman mm -hmm. I mean I think that um, being able to have this podcast and this forum here where we're hopefully helping other people recognize that there's other options and there's things you can do in life, mm -hmm. right, that um, you didn't previously know, right? Um, the last one I want to mention is, uh, I think you guys probably know this, Samuel L. Jackson went to Morehouse, mm -hmm. which was which was pretty cool, and uh, Thurgood Marshall Howard. attended Howard University. Howard. And Howard Law. Oh, my goodness. And, and so... What an inspiration to know that all these folks before us got to go to HBCUs and experience the culture, mm -hmm. the tradition, everything that goes along with it, right, and be educated on top of that yeah. and then do some great things in their life, leaving those footprints for us mm -hmm. to follow in, which is really what I love. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been able to, to do that hopefully as a society. I often think to myself, and I think I said this once before, um, Martin Luther King, I would, if he was alive today, I would ask him, what do you think about the state of our society mm -hmm. and your message back in the 60s? What would you think about? What, and I, I'd ask him, what do, you, what do you think? And people say, well, you know, we've come a long way. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true, we have. But we do have a long way to go. And we still need to recognize, you know, that there's, there's things that folks need to realize um, that as we're here, we're all humans and we're all trying to do the same thing and get to the same thing, mm -hmm. right? We all want to be happy. We all want to have a great career. We all want to make a lot of money, yeah. right? We all want to have a great family circle around us. We all, we want that. That's the thing we want the most, right? So we're all trying to, trying to strive to get that and regardless of the color of your skin. It doesn't really matter, right? And I think that's one of the things my parents taught me is judge someone by their character and I always do that, you know what I mean? I try not to, to judge. And one other thing my parents said to me, which I'll never forget, 
my mom and dad used to say this a lot. You know, what someone thinks and says about you is none of your business. And right. I thought to myself, what does she mean by that? So as I got older and I be, got into education, I kind of realized what she meant. To make more sense. There's so many people that have opinions about what you do or what you say. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Because you kind of forge your own path and do your own thing. And I love that about about the HBCUs and about this conversation we're having right now. Question to you, Mr. Pittman. Do you think that this trip will continue to be something that the kids can latch on to? Well, I certainly hope so. The, the gentleman who started the organization years ago, he's busy running for public offices down in Georgia <laughs> right now. And so he kind of put it out there that he will be continuing, whether if he's in office or not. It's a tremendous opportunity, and I don't see it uh, discontinuing. I think it's in his heart. He's a Morehouse alum, and he has a lot of connections at other HBCUs. He has connections with teachers at different schools, uh, administrators at different colleges. So I don't see him discontinuing. It's in his heart as well as mine, so I think mm -hmm. it's going to continue. And we're going to continue putting great trips out there and just something for the kids to latch on to yeah. and to get a lot out of, not just going to schools, but we're going to throw in some more um, type of historical things. Mm -hmm. There's museums popping up all over the South. There's a couple of new museums that popped up in the last couple of years. So we've been talking about it for the last couple of months now. So when we get the trip going again, we're going to definitely visit those museums. So we're going to turn it into uh, a half and half. Half mm -hmm. historical trip, half HBCU trip. Mm -hmm. So from the last few years, it was more so HBCU, but there's so much going on out there that we have to be aware of, so that's why we're going to do a half and a half now. Oh, yeah. Half historical trip, half HBCU. Absolutely. Trip. I like that. I like yeah. that. I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So, have you made your choice of which HBCU you're going to attend? I have not. I'm waiting for one more decision, but my top three are... Hampton, Spelman, and Howard are mm -hmm. my top three. Okay. I got accepted into a few other, like, Morgan State, you know, Clark Atlanta. But those are the ones I plan on going to. But it, it felt good knowing that if I wanted to, I could go there. Yeah. Um, but I got accepted into Hampton University, and that's my number one choice. So right now I'm really holding on to Spelman so I can be a part of the system. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> for sure. Well, listen, that, that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun for you. Yeah. Do you, want to, do you know what you want to study? Um, for all of the other colleges that I picked, I plan on going to human services with a minor in entrepreneurship because I want to open my own nonprofit. But if I go to Hampton, I'm going to major in music audio production. Oh, yeah. music audio. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. I, I, I love music, and that's why I went to Emerson because I got into radio production and radio broadcasting. And I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, so I, I figured <laughs> I might as well just DJ. Right. So that's why I ended up going there. Um, and that's why you make choices for, for those reasons, you know what I mean? To do something that you really love to do mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and carry on, you know, what it is that, that drove you to that, that place in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to ask, and this is, this is like uh, a kind of a blanket question for either one of you can answer. I, is it possible for someone to be... Uh, going to an HBCU and get hopefully fully funded scholarship wise you guys know that answer if it's possible yeah I, I, anything is possible I, I was gonna <laughs> say. But, but historically the HBCUs um, they're not heavily funded and the mm -hmm. endowment is not as heavy but there's a lot of scholarships and grants that go unused every year so what I stress in my personal finance and business law class you should every student should spend their entire summer going into the senior year, looking for grants and scholarships. Mm -hmm. Sit down for an hour a day. Get off your phone, get off your tablet, <laughs> do whatever you're doing. An hour a day. Invest in yourself one hour a day looking at grants and scholarships. If you work hard, it will be free to you. Yep. Yes. But you must put in the time. Yes. People put so much money on their body versus money in their mind. Yeah. So you got to put money in your mind, invest in yourself, invest in your mind. So if yeah. you sit down at least one hour a day during the summer, mm -hmm. you should be you should be okay. Oh, yeah. I, I agree. For me, last, as he was saying, HBCUs, they are a little bit strong because there's not a lot of money being put into them. But I was awarded 
um, grants for all of the schools that I was accepted to. Every single one gave me at least some portion of money. So it's there if, you know, you put the work in. I spent the last three years of my high school experience focusing on my grades, making sure that everything was where I needed to be so I wouldn't have to struggle as hard as someone who could have got the money if they needed it. And I also spent hours at a time just doing scholarships, finding scholarships, because even $500 is enough, $5,000 is enough for room and board, a meal plan, and if they could get that off of my plate, then I'm making room for other things. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and also other students as yeah. well, right? Yeah. Then they can follow in your footsteps and they can see exactly what the example you're, you're actually leaving, and then they can be like, oh, you know what, she did that, I, I think I could probably do that. Yeah. And that's really what's important is, is leaving a footprint or footsteps that folks can follow. That's why we call this podcast Footprints, because I think it's important to pass that on to some other folks who may need that. Someone could be in your position at this moment thinking, I want to go to an HBCU, but how do I do it? Yeah. So hopefully this podcast will give them some insight, and then and then they uh, go to BHS, they can talk to Mr. Pittman a little bit about the trip and all of that. So that's always where it's at. It's like getting information and, and, and getting it out there, right? And that's what's important. Um, Another question I had, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Davis's voice is acting up here. Um, so when, when we talk about HBCUs, we want to make sure we always keep it in a positive light, right? Because we know why they were created initially. It was separate but equal. That's what it was. And so as we move forward now, and here we are in 2024, right? We want to make sure we understand the purpose of, of this conversation and the purpose of those institutions, right? It's for higher education. Yeah. It's to get those folks who want to go do something with their lives further down the road that they can, you know, actually mm -hmm. latch onto. There's trade schools and other things you can do, but the purpose of any school, basically, uh, or any higher education school, is to get those folks in there and then they can kind of figure out their purpose in life as to what they want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, what footprint do they want to leave? You know, the footprint that my mother left on me was indelible. Uh, my mom was a respiratory therapist at New England Baptist Hospital for 30 years. Got up every morning, went to work, right? Retired, and now she lives in Florida. Hi, Mom. <laughs> um, and so, uh, Mary Davis, by the way, she uh, was an uh, uh, unbelievable person and still is. And, and left uh, a huge footprint on me in terms of me being a, here doing this. Um, and I was afforded a lot of opportunities um, because of that. But anyway, I, I, I wanted to, to, to say that because I think it's important that the footprints that are left on us, we, we kind of pay it forward and hopefully leave it on somebody else. Like, who was your biggest influence when you were younger coming up in terms of education and school and all of that? I think my biggest influence were my parents, respectively. They each have their their strengths that I look up to. My parents, both of them are very hardworking. They emphasize you won't get anything unless you work for it. Things don't just happen to you because you want them to. You have to put the thought forward, the intention forward, and the fruits of your labor will eventually come. Um, and watching my mom get up work doubles, work overtime to make sure everyone had what they needed, make sure you know, we were fed, my dad making sure we all got where we needed to be because he's the driver, he goes where we need to go. I looked at that and thought, I admire you guys for working so hard, but I will make sure that my kids will never have to work so hard or see me work so hard, see me bend my back a million different ways for them to have what is necessary. And I think they instilled that hardworking mm -hmm. mentality within me. Absolutely. I mean, I think that uh, all our parents do that, and that's what you try to do. You try to pay it forward a little bit. You instore, instill excuse me, those, those core values inside your kids and hope they're, they're able to use that in whatever capacity that they want to do in life, or whatever it is that they're, they admire or, or they kind of aspire to. So that's kind of the biggest thing um, with, with footprints is being able to take that footprint and see it for what it is and then say, okay, you know what? I'm going to use this to, to better myself. Mr. Mr. Pittman, tell us quickly, who left a footprint on you? I would say my parents, they're similar to Elodie. They're both hardworking. 
and my grandmother. My grandmother, you would go to her with a problem, she would never answer. She would always answer you with a question. So she would uh, prompt uh, you to, to think about whatever your problem was. So uh, certainly my parents, because they're hard working, and uh, my grandmother. Absolutely. Yeah. One last point before, I know you're getting ready to sign off. One last point about HBCUs. Um, if students go, they will make connections uh, not only amongst their peers, they will make connections uh, with teachers. You will, you will never um, bump into teachers that care more than teachers at HBCU. Every campus mm -hmm. that we go on, we bump into teachers that actually care about you. Mm -hmm. So those teachers care about, about you, make sure that you succeed. And if you miss class, they will personally call you call and tell you why phone. you missed the class. Mm -hmm. So you will, uh, you will get teachers that really, really care about you and they want you to succeed. I love that. And that's why we're talking about it today. HBCUs, ladies and gentlemen. So I wanna thank you guys for uh, tuning in to uh, episode number two here of Footprints with me, Mr. Davis, and Mr. Pittman, and Elodie LaPointe. Uh, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we're on BevCam, the educational channel, which is channel 22. We're also going to be uh, on SoundCloud as well, so make sure you check out the podcast on SoundCloud. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for really hanging out with me today and, 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 and talking about this. Thank you for this having is a, us. a tremendous subject, and I... I really appreciate both of you, and uh, you know, let's just get this message out to folks. HBCU, you yeah. know. Yes, indeed. You know. <laughs> Without a doubt, HBCU, baby. You know. Yes, indeed. Thank you.